Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with a really fun, quick card project for you today, or you can actually use these on your scrapbook pages if you prefer. But we're going to make some really fun hot glue cards. And um, what you need is a glue gun, some silicone molds, and um, some old book pages. And I just ripped out a few pages. Um, from some old books that were being thrown away at the library. So what you want to do is fill the cavity of a silicone mold with hot glue. Uh, you can use either a low or high temperature glue gun. Whatever you have is fine. And um, you want to fill it pretty full because you want some glue to squish out when you press it to the paper. And when you're filling, you don't have to work too quickly because um, when you're filling a mold this size, uh, it's going to be stay pretty hot for a while and then simply smoosh it on your paper so it kind of squishes out the edge. And then you want to set that aside to dry. And I also want to do this one here. I'm going to set that aside and grab another paper. This is a much shallower mold so it won't take quite as long to, uh, to dry. You don't have to be too perfect either because when you squish it, it's going to fill in all the gaps. Hopefully I got enough in on that one. So that's just going to take a minute, and while that is cooling, I'm going to show you how I made these cute little envelopes. I used uh, the create a loop, and I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit so that you can see the whole thing in action. So I've got a piece of scrapbook paper, and I'm going to flip it over because I want my, uh, in my pattern to be on the outside, and it will just save me a step. And I'm going to set the big part of the template down and tear away the paper. I taught my uh, one of my daughters how to do these today. And uh, she said, I think I want to just sit down, watch TV, and make envelopes. <laughs> Girl after my own heart, I've spent many a night just uh, kind of vegging out in front of the TV, watching Doctor Who and making envelopes. Good times. Good times. Saturday night, and I'm making envelopes and watching Doctor Who. Yeah. I am a big nerd. <laughs> like, you didn't know that already. Oops, let me get that top part folded. So the thing I really like about um, making my envelopes at the same time as I make my cards is that you can use the um, the leftover part, the leftover paper from your envelope to line your card or to decorate your card. Uh, let's see, I had a glue stick over here. What happened to that thing? I probably knocked it onto the floor. Don't you know what? All right, we'll use some double-sided tape here, I guess. Where, where have my glue sticks gone? Where have all the glue sticks gone? They're probably under my bench somewhere. Hard to believe anything could fit under there. It's chock-a-block full. All right, so there we got my envelope. And uh, to make the little card, because our glue is still dry, I'm going to give that a minute. Um, we have just a folded in half piece of paper. And um, we are going to, this is a four by four piece of paper, by the way. And we're going to take this paper and we are going to cover the inside of the card. Now the cool thing about this is you take an eight and a half inch by 11 piece of cardstock and you cut it down to eight by eight, cut that in half and you have two four by four cards because you have two four by eight pieces so you end up with two four by four cards, sorry. Then you have a three inch wide scrap or so and cut that and make the liners for your cards like I did here. So you can use that pattern on the inside, which I had to do because I actually got ink smudged all over the inside of these cards and that's how this came to be. Um, but it looks better anyway, so, and it gives you a more luxe, kind of thicker feeling card too. So, you know, that I love it. Don't you love when you make a mistake and it turns out being more awesome? Love that. So anyway, just showing you how you can make two cards from one sheet of paper and, um, and one pattern paper. So, where was I? Oh yes, we're lining this. Would be real handy. Ah, there's my glue stick. Honest to God, it was right sitting. See where my hand is? It was right like an inch that way. You're kidding me. Oh my goodness. So to line, when I'm just lining a card with paper, I simply use a glue stick because that's going to hold it just fine. And I like these um, permanent glue sticks. They have them at Staples. They're by Avery. They seem to work better than anything else. And I kind of overlap it and press it down really good. And then I fold it in half. And it's actually, when you fold it in half, you're going to notice that um, you actually end up with a little more paper on the outside. So what I'm going to do is pause the camera. I'm going to go trim this excess paper off, and we're going to finish making our card. All right, we've got our lined card here. I'm just going to press it down good with my finger, and I'm going to go and get the um, hot glue part that we were just playing with. And I'm pulling off the silicone part, and... You can see that I have got my hot glue embellishment. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab some permanent markers 
and I am going to color it in and I'm going to use the broad end let me zoom in for that there I'm going to use the broad end and I'm just going to uh, roughly color over it so it catches the um, texture you try not to get any of the permanent marker on the just raw paper but if it happens it happens not a big deal and then to do around it you can leave it just like that you got some cool got some cool texture there but um, I think it might be more fun if I throw in some color with a, a water-based marker and I'm using a distress marker I know they're I've mentioned before they're not my favorite but for this technique they're really good because they uh, will blend really well because I have um, I have this on kind of a glossy book page this uh this marker is kind of so that's weird see this marker was so juicy a minute ago and now it's all feeling all dry oh well maybe I'll just kind of draw some in now that's not gonna work all right so you know what you get the idea and then I'm gonna give a little bit of spray here so this is gonna be kind of lighter than the other one and then I just let that dry and have some nice lovely gold shimmer on it and to do the butterfly one that'd be way better if that dark green marker <laughs> worked wouldn't it all right what did I do with that other one? Oh my goodness I'm losing things left and right here what did I do with that other hot glue what did I do with the hot glue what did I do with the hot glue I'm gonna have to pause this one more time because I don't know what I did with my hot glue found it <laughs> it was you remember where I pointed where the glue stick was it was right over there apparently it's a blind spot maybe the mold and the glue stick ran off to a lope what would you get glue and mold you get something like this probably <laughs> Oh, I'm silly. Okay, so again, we're going to go with this time, though this has a little bit more detail, this butterfly, so I can actually color it a little fancier. So I'm going to go with my fine tip end of my Pro Marker here. You can use a Sharpie or a Bic Market, whatever you have. You don't have to have anything fancy, but this is the color I wanted, so I grabbed this one. And then I'm going to grab some pink again with the Pro Marker. You know, and my, my theory on markers is they, you know, go for the color you want. If you can get the color you want in the cheaper ones, it's going to be fine. Um, you know, obviously the more expensive brands have a wider color selection. And go ahead, you can mix and match them. Any alcohol markers are going to work fine with other alcohol markers. Don't believe the, uh, the hype that you have to have all of one brand. Mix it up. They all play nice together. I probably have a few of every brand out there, and they're all fine. There we go. Isn't that cool looking? Okay, let's hopefully these markers perform better. Hopefully these distress markers will perform better than my other ones. And if you do get a little extra marker where you don't want it, if it's on the glue, you can wipe it off with your thumb. And all right, so I'm just going to go in and scribble in some marker on the paper here. Oh, good one frame. I hadn't checked in a while. I've been, I've been very distracted. I'm not exactly sure why. There we go. And this marker, these distress markers, I think, have a little extra glycerin or something in them that keeps them juicy longer. So that's why I'm using them for this project. Oh, I thought I lost another marker there. That was a close one. And I'm just going to scribble this out and give it a squirt of a shimmer stuff. Now, of course, this isn't going to be dry right away for me to make the card, but I do have one that is dry enough to use if I haven't lost it. Hi Evan, it's right here. Let me zoom out again and we're gonna go back to the card that we prepared which seriously, oh here it is. <laughs> I thought I lost it again. Woo! Alright, so that's gonna go on just like that. We're using double-sided tape because I don't think a uh, glue stick's gonna cut it or I could have hot glued it but it might have melted my embellishment so I don't want that to happen. And I'm just going to stick that on just like that. Try not to get any ink where you don't want it here. And I just tore, um, I just tore the, obviously, I just tore around here to get that really fancy deck of ledge. And so you end up with a little cardstock left over when you make two 4x4 four four cards from one sheet of 8.5x11 inch cardstock. So I'm going to use that for the liner because you really wouldn't want to write on that pattern background. But to make it a little fancier, I took a leaf stamp to kind of to enhance the lovely theme I have going on in this card set and I'm gonna use my markers if they want to perform for me which I don't know I have such a hard time with these markers and you're doing a little of this light green in the middle actually I'm gonna do it all with this light green first because I have I'm uh, losing hope that that dark green marker is gonna uh, 
gonna do do it for us here but I'm gonna stamp that down in the corner and there you go that's all there is to it I'm gonna glue that on the inside got a second to dry and um, yeah it's easy these are Martha Stewart molds they usually go on sale at the big box craft stores if not you can use a coupon and the uh, envelope template is from my friends at create a lope and uh, you really should check their stuff out. They're really great, easy to use templates. So there you have it, my friends. Now I have three little note cards for the next time I need to send a thank you note or just a hi, how are you note. There we go. Huzzah! Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.